hold that thought. We'll come back in just a minute. And we are back. Thanks for sticking with us. You're listening to Kiss Mike Keister on Society Bites Radio, and I'm your host, Kate O'Neill, with Joe Riggio. Hey, hey, Joe. Hey, hey, Katie. All right. We're talking about vehicles. So while we're talking about vehicles, I wanted to bring up another pet peeve of mine. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. I bought a beautiful car this year. Now, granted, it's not new by any sense of the word. However, I did expect it to go past six months before I had a problem with it. You know that nice little TV computer that they put in the dash of all these new cars now? Well, mine doesn't have half the bells and whistles because it's of 2014. So this was like the first year they ever put this thing in the car. So it was a test vehicle, I'm sure. But about 90 to 120 days into driving this, all of a sudden my little TV screen starts doing some weird things. So it would change channels. It would give me the weather. It would not make a phone call. It. The only thing that's really worked on this car since I bought it was the backup camera. I was going to say, the start and backup pedal still. Yeah, you know, that it, it, the, the button does work if you push it. Of course, you do have to have your foot on the brake. But I thought you had to have it in the gas. No wonder it doesn't work. <laughs> See, there you go. But the darn camera for the backup is the only thing that works on this stupid computer screen. So now my car has been affectionately renamed as Christine. And Christine will remain Christine until they get that fixed, at which time I may consider renaming her Christy. But I'm not sure yet. Well, you do know Christine was indestructible and would come back to life after when she would also consume people, too. Well, I'm thinking she's dry and she needs a body. Well, there you go. <laughs> Anyone want to volunteer? Not me. Mm-mm. <laughs> but that is definitely a pet peeve. You buy a car, you expect it to last a while. Not go nickel and dime on you immediately. I was expecting at least a year or so before I had to put any money into it. I mean, to tell you the truth, I this shows how loyal I am to the brand, but I had an 03, 2006, 2012, 2015, and now I own a 2017 Nissan Sentra. And all throughout those times I've had the Sentra, I've never had any issues until now with the 2017. Now, all the ones I had before, I bought up in PA. This is the first one I bought in Florida. So I don't know if it's a Florida thing or if it was just... This year in brand and model, I don't know. Florida cars are made differently to run differently. So what you're saying is I got to go back up to PA to get a good car? Yeah, pretty much. Damn. I I guess I got (laughs) to take the auto train to go back up, drive it, and drop off the car and come back down. Yeah. Put some miles on it. Yeah, fly up there, buy your car, drive it back. Should be a nice scenic drive. Until you get pulled over. Sir, you're in the wrong state. Got to quarantine for 14 days. (laughs) No! (laughs) All right. Well, let's talk about passengers who fiddle with a car driver's radio. That is a major pet peeve of mine. Yeah, that is one of mine where I had a friend constantly get in my car and immediately turn the radio station on. I'm like, excuse you? Whose car is this? This is mine. (laughs) Yeah, and possession is nine-tenths of the law. Well, you would think that, but some people still argue that. But I love my car because I have the controls of my steering wheel. So when they start fiddling with it, boop, I just fiddle right back. Just fiddle right back. There you go. <clears throat> That's kind of like me. I used to drive up and down the road with my garage door opener just to see how many others would open. <laughs> and how many did open? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you knew that you actually had a place to park every time. Every time. 
<laughs> That's great. I love it. Well, Katie, I'm going to pick a card here from one of these decks, and we're going to have some fun with this. Okay. Before we get into that, though, I want I want to tell everybody what we're doing here. We uh, S- Joe has discovered a new toy. Now, in our neck of the woods, when you do podcasts, this is something that would help all hosts, no matter where you're from, no matter what your show. These are kind of cool, but they also lead you to some very interesting answers. They're decks of cards with questions on them, and you have to answer the question. Now, these are typically interview questions. However, they're not typical interview questions well there, there's a difference there, there's a set of five cards that i bought one is an episode desk where uh, episode deck that helps you think of episodes but two of them are interview questions like more professional interview these two that i have on the table right now are called what the heck and would you rather these are more funnier questions that i think uh-huh. would fit our show here but the thing is even if you don't use them for a podcast these are still good questions that you could have a glass of wine and just be with friends and just Talk and did have you great stack time. this deck? Maybe I did, Katie. Maybe I did. Let's see what question I get out of this. I'm curious. Oh. <laughs> All right. Is this truth or dare? No, this isn't truth or dare, but it does have to do with automobiles. Oh, how interesting. And this is so funny. Have you ever licked a battery? No. Could be a car battery or battery. Doesn't matter. Well, a regular battery, yeah, because you want to see if it's got any charge left in it. Oh. A- an Ever Ready or a. You know, an energizer? No, no. I I would never do that. Why? Oh, honey, I grew up where my daddy hurt his finger and he stuck it in a can of turpentine. Now, seriously, we were kids that tested everything. This is true. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I never licked a battery. No. All right. Oh, you're going to do the would you rather. Okay. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. All right. Joe, would you rather... Have your head be too big for your body or hands that are too small for your size? I think Hmm. I'm going to go with the first one because I want to be a (laughs) bobblehead. I want to have the big head so I could be a bobblehead and be like... Mm, Okay, I've got two trains of thought going on that right now. And I'm (laughs) I'm going to be really nice about it. But, you know, you you really should keep your hands the size they are. Okay, we'll just go with that. Yeah. <laughs> and these are, and these, like I said, these are nice decks, and these are brought to us by poddecks.com, but we'll probably have a little bit more fun with these cards. Who knows? But <laughs> <laughs> we just want to try a little out here and there just to see, but we want to keep a flow going. All right, I'm going to give you a what the heck. Oh, really? Okay. If you could have anything named after you, what would you want it to be? Anything I want named after me? Maybe a good rum. Now, why would you say that? Because then everyone might like remember me as they're having fun. Honey, if I'm drinking rum, trust me, I ain't going to remember you or anybody else. Oh, trust me. People know the <laughs> rum that they go after. Bacardi, <laughs> Captain Morgan. You, you name certain cannonball rum. You, you have a certain rum, you'll go to it. But if I'm labeled as the one... That's going to be the party go-getter one. Well, then you yeah. damn well better get me drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll work on that. I'll make some moonshine. Okay, there you go. <laughs> but what about you? What about me? Yeah, what would you want named after you? Well, honey, I already got a door named after me. That was enough to make me just the happiest girl on the face of the earth, because I've never had a door named after me before. <laughs> it says right up there on the front, Society by its Radio, Katie O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. I think that's a good thing, but we'll just go off of that. But yeah, I'm now going to pick one more for you. Here you go. Would, would you rather have no eyebrows or an extra finger? Oh, new eyebrows. Absolutely. No extra finger? No. I can pick my nose with the ones I have now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I probably want to have the extra finger. So that way I could try to be a little bit more ambidextrous. <laughs> Double your pleasure, double your fun. <laughs> sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, moving on. Uh, another pet peeve that I thought was really good is people who don't use turn signals. We'll keep it on the automotive oh side. Oh, my God. Have you seen the Facebook post with the uh, crested chihuahua sticking its head out the window 
screaming, and it, the caption underneath it says, Use your blinker. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. It's but very that's cute. You should. You should. I, I, I get caught up in these dog videos and things on Facebook. Your, your moon pie. Starfish. Oh, I love moon pie. I love moon pie. What, what's, what's that made out? What, what program is that made from, Katie? Now we know. Uh, moon pie star box. No, 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 no. You remember when we were talking about TikTok? And you're like, I don't know what TikTok is and all this other stuff. But that's oh. what they use. Oh, Never mind. <laughs> just, just making sure. Well, I, I love this, uh, this pet peeve because I, everyone can agree to this. Because basically, how many times you go down the road and someone doesn't turn on the turn signal and they just turn and you're like, whoa, and you almost had a collision with them every day. Yep, every day. You go down three hundred one, you guarantee it's going to happen because there's a stoplight every mile or so. Yep. And the thing that you talked about with the dog earlier with the little meme, I think that's cute. But come on, people, put your dogs in a harness and put them in their seat. Don't have them on your lap in front of a a driving wheel. Oh, absolutely do I agree with that. And for those of you that don't know, there's an app that you can go to. It's called Wish.com. You can buy a doggy safety belt for a dollar. Well, I don't know if I trust that for a dollar. I trust it. It's... I ordered four of them, and I would not trade them for love nor money because they keep that dog right where he ought to be. Your seatbelt doesn't go around beeping because there's something clicked in it, mm-hmm. and your dogs aren't climbing all over you while you're trying to drive. Yeah. Well, back in the day, obviously, this is before the harnesses became a thing, is we had pet dogs, and they would climb, but we made sure that they weren't climbing on us when we were driving. They knew their limits, but... We made sure that, you know, our windows were only up to a uh, certain point, and um, we just made sure that everything was there. But when uh, one of my dogs that I had was very, I loved her so much, she would actually curl up in a ball in the passenger seat and just sleep until I either stopped or whatever, and then we would go from there. Well, I understand that, but, you know... I just think it's better to hang on to the puppy and and make sure that they're safe. There's an awful lot of people that don't seem to understand that, one, it's against the law to drive around your car with your dog inside and not having it confined. Whether it's confined to the back seat or the front seat makes no difference, but they are supposed to be harnessed. People don't realize that. It is, it's like this unwritten law that nobody seems to know about, but we all talk about. We'll continue after this word. Hi, Paul Anthony here for Jazz Unlimited, heard weekly on the Society Bites Radio Network. Join me this and every week for Jazz Unlimited with Paul Anthony, Tuesdays at 4 p.m., Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Society Bites Radio. When you leave the house, do you have your swanky on? When was the last time you made a purchase that made you feel so special? Be swanky is more than a purse. It's an attitude. Need a backpack? Be Swanky transforms effortlessly for convenient wearing. Be Swanky's each one a unique, limited, handcrafted work of art by artisan women valued for their contributions. To purchase a Be Swanky is to contribute to the betterment of women and select charities. Be the difference. Be Swanky. BeSwanky.com Okay, now where was I? We were talking about dogs and harnesses. Dogs and harnesses. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's illegal to drive around in your car if your dog is not confined. Now, these little doggy safety belts, as I call them, one end attaches to their collar or their harness. The other end clips into the seat belt jack in the car. So, you know, they're not going anywhere. And if they do have a tendency to want to stick their head out the window, like so many dogs do, you can keep them from jumping out or somebody from grabbing them. Exactly. But 
And that's one thing, like I said, we always kept our windows somewhat half up so the dogs didn't have the ability to jump over and out. But the I'm still thinking about like the dogs that are on the people's 